Hi, my name is Ivy Starnes, and I'm a gated trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. Happy New Year. Today we're talking about how many times does it take before the horse actually knows something or understands something. Now, you may be asking, why is this relevant? Because so many people expect horses to either know something from them when they were born or learn it in just a few sessions, maybe even a dozen sessions, maybe even 20 or 30 sessions, but how long does it actually take before they know what you want them to do? And this is super relevant, whether you have a gated horse or a non-gated horse, and no matter what you're teaching, because it's so easy to frustrate horses. We tend to want results very fast, which I talked a little bit yesterday when I talked about being patient with your horse and learning to have that patience. But it also goes deeper than that, and it's a problem for me too, is the question is, when does the horse know? So somebody had mentioned on one of my videos that, you know, John Lyon said it takes a uh, 100 times or a 1,000 times before the horse knows something or does it a bunch of times in a row. Uh, and I tried to find actually that quote from John Lyons, um, and I couldn't find it, but I do... I was able to like look it up and if quite a few people do agree um, that it takes a lot of time. So let me see if I can find it. Someone said, John Lyons says the horse has to do it a hundred times in a row before he gets it. And that's the beginning of it. A lot of times I see the number a thousand times thrown around before the horse understands what you want them to do a thousand times. So obviously one of the questions I get asked a lot is getting my horse to gate or, you know, you getting your horse to gate. And I want to talk about that. So question, I got an email. I've got a horse. It's five years old. He gates some of the time, but not consistently. How do I fix that? And I want to address that as well. How do you get the horse to gate consistently over and over again? Well, actually, the answer is really, really simple um, and actually easy for anybody to do, but difficult for people that I know to do it. So the problem is we have a horse. Let's say you have a horse and your horse is gating some of the time, but then he's trotty or pacey the other times. What do you do? Well, I'm not going to address whether they're trotty or pacey right now, but how do you get them to gate more to give you more? Now, I've got a few videos. I'm going to put the links in the description that talk about how to get a horse gating more. And I have specific videos on my private training group that you can see the whole training process. Uh, so I've got a trotty horse and you get to see the, the training process of how he goes from trotting almost all the time to gating almost all the time in I think seven days. So that's my private training group. It's $99 to join and you're in for life. You don't have to pay every year. I don't keep your credit card info. But how do you get that? Well, in the video it'll show you, but I'm going to tell you how you get that. Because getting a smooth gait consistently is so fun. But we have this idea of the horse not knowing what we want. So how do we get a horse that doesn't want to gate and get them to want to gate consistently? Well, let's take it under the idea that the horse doesn't know what you want. And if you want to know why they don't know what you want, check out the videos in the description that talks about why horses don't gate. But let's assume he doesn't know what you want. From there, let's say that we need to get the horse to understand and again, that's that idea of how many times you have to do it. So we get our horse out, we ride, for whatever reason, he starts gating. And this everybody knows this. If you've been watching my videos, you know the answer. Everybody wants to push the horse for more gait because finally, finally, it feels good. You're getting that nice gait. But that's the worst thing you can do because it doesn't teach him anything. If you want him to gait for a mile, you need to tell him that 10 steps is the right thing. So when he gates, what you must do, and I promise this works, I works for me, and I have dozens of other people that are saying this works. But if it works, so it works. When he gates for 10 steps, you need to stop him and praise and stand there for 60 seconds. Now, other alternatives are letting him stop and eat some grass, giving him a handful of food. If your horse absolutely will not stand, something to work on, but you can go ahead and let them walk on a loose rein. But the, the last thing you need to do is ask them for more gait because it doesn't teach them anything. 
we need to assume that the horse has to practice doing something a hundred times or a thousand times, but it isn't enough just to do it. He has to know that that's what we want and he has to be rewarded for it. And that there is the trick. <clears throat> Not enough just to have him do it and push him for more because if you push your gated horse for more gait and he gates, and eventually he's going to fall into the trot or the pace and then you correct it. And that goes back to some of the videos where I talk about horses don't learn when you correct them. They learn when you praise them for the right thing. So that's our whole goal. Our whole goal is to praise them for doing the gate. Now, let's say you got it. You're like, Ivy, yes, I know. I'm going to praise them for gating. I'm going to stop and praise. We got that. We're maybe going to give a treat or let them eat grass. How many times do you have to do it? Well, think about it. They have to know. They don't understand English. We have to do it a hundred times before they start to get it. No, that's not that daunting if you do it 20 or 30 times in a single session. And yes, that's very possible to stop and praise 20 or 30 times in a single session. Then it might only take you five days and the horse starts to get it. And you know what? That's exactly what I see. When I'm training, a lot of times I see horses, uh, I mean, in clinics it goes faster, but on a normal training, 20, 30 minutes, five days, that horse is starting to gate consistently. Not perfectly, but they're starting to get it. And imagine you've got your 100 times in, so they're starting to get it, you're getting progress, but you have to not stop there. You have to go for a 1,000 times. So if it took you five days to get 100 steps, let's see, do the math, 10 more times, that, like that's 50 days. 50 days, not in a row, but 50 days where you praise the horse for longer and longer steps of gating and then he's going to start gating. That's realistic. You know what people expect? People expect me to get a horse gating perfectly in three days or a week. They expect themselves to be able to get a horse gating in a few days, and that's why we get so frustrated. And I'm here not only to encourage you on what you should do, but to encourage you that it is hard and it will take time. But don't worry, that's normal, and if you do take that time, your horse will gate. Noelle says, hey, from the mountains of Virginia. Hey, Nan uh, and Jack. And Regina says, happy new year. And Christy says, happy new year. Amy says she's practicing waiting today. Good for you, Amy. And Chrissy says, it worked for me. Uh, the stop and praise totally works. I have um, a whole document right now about people that have given me testimonies about how stop and praise has worked for them. These are just normal people. These are people that are not trainers that did not think it would work for them. But once they started they saw a huge, huge improvement. Uh, Zach says hi to me and everyone. Hi, Zach. So honestly, you need to expect your horse to not start to understand a gate until you have stopped and praised a hundred times. Now, to think about that, a hundred times seems like a long time, but it also gives you a goal. So if you say, okay, I'm going to stop and praise 20 times today. 20 times. It's actually not that hard to do especially if you're just a little bit disciplined. Um, and even if you don't stand for 60 seconds, even if it's only 30 seconds, you're looking at, you know, working time, 20 to 30 minutes, resting time, 20 minutes, 10, 20 minutes. That's, the horse learns so much. I just want you to think about it. That seems so daunting. It even seems daunting when I say it. Man, I say you have to stop and stand 20 times and it sounds a little scary to me. So if that's intimidating to you, I'm saying it going, wow, that's, you're standing for 20 minutes. That's a long time. Yes, it is. But your horse is going to learn because after five days of you stopping and praising for a little bit of gait, I guarantee, I promise, you tell me, you video it and show me that your horse doesn't make progress in five days. I'll give you money. I'll give $100 to somebody if they don't, if they can't stop and praise for a couple steps of gait. Now, we are going to run into the trouble. Some horses are really, really pacey or really trotty and we need to work on that to get them out of that. But if your horse skates a little bit, occasionally, if you stop and praise 20 times in a session, do that five days. If you don't have progress, let me know. I will give you free lessons or something because it does work. I've never heard anybody say it doesn't. So there we go. That's how much I believe in this. Um, so we have to be thinking about how realistically how long it's going to take. New Year's. New Year's is the time of everybody coming up with a New Year's resolution. Uh, I don't really do them anymore, um, but I do try to set goals for myself 
about being a better horse person and setting goals of things I can actually work on with my horses. But I don't, I don't want to get stuck in a rut where one, I don't finish (laughs) by setting myself goals and two, don't set unrealistic goals immediately. Set high goals in the future. Don't say, I want my horse gating in two weeks. Set yourself three months and work at it a couple days a week, but don't give up. There's a book called, uh, the book about finishing, which I did finish, but I can't remember the title. And I'll try to put that link in the comments below. And it talked about usually the hardest day for people to get past is day two. Day one, they got started. Day two, they know they're going to quit eventually. It doesn't matter how you know you're going to skip a day. And it's that after you skip a day, that next time you go to work on it, you'll tell yourself, oh, you skipped a day. You know what? Just quit now. Don't even try. When if you think about it, all you need to get your horse to start gating consistently is reward them 100 times. Just 100 times. How often can you reward in a single session? 10 times? 20 times? Multiply that to get to 100. It's not that daunting, but it's going to seem like it. Um, Diana says, hi, Pamela says baby steps for us still working on head down. He seems to enjoy all the praising. Only time I get a consistent gate is when he's going back to the barn. Thanks to the previous owner. Would it be best for me to work with this in my favor or is this a bad idea? So there are, when I am first working with a horse and if there's a spot where they gate better, say going toward the barn, I will use that for the first couple of days and set myself a limit of like only the first couple of days, three, four days after that, they need to gate consistently away from home. But actually, here's what I can tell you, Pamela, most likely you're not getting gate away from home. Obviously you need the head down, but most likely what you're missing is energy impulsion and going forward. You have that when you go toward the barn, but you usually don't when you when you go away. So ride of the crop or just make yourself more energy. Go forward right now. And if he gates a little bit, stop and praise. And if you're not getting it, do two things. Head down and really go forward and see if that makes a difference. Um, and then let me know how it works. Chrissy says, that's where I'm at with clicker right now, stuck on day two. Well, trust me, It happens to me as well, and it happens to everybody, which is why I'm going to really try to keep motivational videos coming this year to keep working on things, because it will transform you and your horse if you can get past day two, Um, which actually sounds like a title of video I should do, get past day two. Shanna says, hi from Virginia, happy new year to everyone. Yes, happy new year to everybody. Remember, this year, it's, don't think about it compared to last year. Think about it compared to what you're going to do tomorrow, what you're going to do this week or next week and what you want to get done with your horses and then work toward that. Get past day two. Work to praise your horse a hundred times for something. Let's say you're training your horse to stand for the mounting block. Okay, simpler than gate, right? You just have to either stop and praise or give a treat. And your job is to do it a hundred times before you should expect your horse to stand quietly. Now, it's very easy to stand at the mounting block, get down, give a treat. Walk on the mounting block, stand there, get down, give a treat. Walk on the mounting block, tap the saddle, walk down, give a treat. It is so simple, so easy. You could do that 50 times in one session, 20 times. Maybe the stairs is daunting. Do that five days in a row. And you know what? I guarantee again that your horse is going to start standing. And all it will have taken is for you to say, I'm going to do this 100 times. Just think about if we applied that to ourselves. For example, I Okay, just because I want to encourage everybody, I, for Christmas, asked for and got this book. And it is called Paint Yourself Calm by Jean Hines. Now, I like watercolors. Um, I am not, I mean, you've seen some of the painting I've done. I'm pretty good. But I only got that way because I started practicing. And when I first started, I did not like any of my stuff. Now, other people might have looked at it and said, wow, Ivy, this is amazing. I did not like it. Um, And let me read you something from here because I want to encourage you guys that you don't have to be a trainer and you don't have to be a painter to get things done. So this book, the idea is that you don't have to be an artist to paint. So in this book, she says, the myth, a myth exists that when we paint, we have to produce something worth seeing. And there's a weird notion that we have to be worthy of holding a paintbrush. 
It sounds crazy, but I meet people who tell me with greatest conviction that they aren't good enough to paint. And the question is, good enough for whom? You are your, you have your horse's best interest at heart. You are the one that can make a difference in the training, but only if you do it. If you never get started training, then you'll never make progress. But a hundred times of practicing something is not hard. It's not hard to paint a hundred things over a year. And by the end of that, you'll get better. But you know what? I didn't want to do it because I knew I wasn't good enough, that I wouldn't be happy with my art. And that's true of all artists, no matter where they're at. And so this book has been really helpful to me to just get started. And let me just show you a couple of simple things that I did. Um, and I'm just showing you these just so you can see um, how, let's see, where is it? There's it spoken. Just having fun with painting. And it can be the same way with horses as well. So this is a really simple exercise of using yellow um, to get to do watercolor and to enjoy it and just moving paint across the page. And so if you at all want are interested in art, uh, definitely check out this book, um, Paint Yourself Calm. Uh, here's another one. I really like it. This one turned out. Um, there we go. Is it in focus there? Uh, and it's just so simple. Anybody can make things like this. And she gives you, and it's not exactly a step-by-step -step instruction booklet for watercolor, but she so encourages people to just paint. You don't have to be good enough. You just have to do it. So with your horses, you need to be willing to do it a hundred times and start there. You get that and you're going to make progress. But if you don't get started and you don't get past day one or day two, then you're never going to make progress. But don't you want a horse that stands still and gates and steps over for the mounting block and side passes and canters and stops and stands? Well, you have to get started, but you have to remember to be realistic. It's going to take a hundred times for your horse to start getting it. Pamela says, thanks for the recommendations. I can't wait to add more energy. That's to get her horse gating away from home. Good luck, Pamela. I hope that encourages people a little bit, even if it just encourages you to do some watercolors. Even if you don't want to do watercolors, it's fine. But just this idea, it will take time. I, I wish I would just sit down and paint 100 things because I know I would get better. But everybody gets to a place where they feel like they're not good enough or it's not worth starting because it's going to be too difficult or we're going to do it twice and not see a lot of progress and quit. But remember, you have to reward yourself a hundred and then a thousand times before they start to get it, no matter what you're teaching. Apply that to working groundwork. Apply that to anything you do, teaching the horse to stand for saddling, loading into a trailer. I mean, just think about a hundred times before the horse starts to get it and gets comfortable. And that's just the beginning goal. That's not where we want to end. That's where we want to start. Melissa says, hello from Virginia. I can get a nice slow gait with a lowered head for my horse in a small group setting. Our issues arise when he gets energized from a group of more than two. I'm unable to get, give him a loose rein. He takes advantage of it and immediately goes into a pace. I never get the opportunity to loosen the reins for a release. Uh, Melissa, that is a great point. I'm going to mention briefly that I have a horse in a video on my private training group. Again, you do not have to join. I'm going to do these free videos. But in my private training group, uh, there's a video of a horse. It was very fast, very high energy, head up all the time. In a clinic, you get to see the video progression of how he starts dropping his head. Now, this horse, when I got on, is fast. He goes right away. He's not a slow horse. And everybody would have looked at that horse and said, there, I can't release the reins. You have to release the reins. You have to find an opportunity. I don't care that he speeds up and paces. When he, he speeds up, I always slow a horse down. I never let them go faster, but I would slow down. I'd pull on the reins and I'd immediately release. And then I'd ask him to drop his head. And as soon as he started to soften, remember, it's not about dropping the head. It's about them tucking their nose. As soon as he does, drop those reins right there. You have to do it. And he's going to speed up. Uh, trust me, I have ridden these horses that speed up. And it doesn't matter. You need to keep releasing the reins as soon as he softens. And that's the thing people miss. It's not about the head going down necessarily. It's as soon as they tuck their nose and soften, drop those reins right there. Is he going to speed up? Yes, that's okay. Also, practice riding by yourself and working on a faster gait and getting head down so you can kind of stimulate that higher energy. Uh, you can also do it at the canter if you're comfortable cantering, because if you can get head down and softness at that faster speed, it'll help you when you're in that bigger group. And a lot of people don't like to hear it. But honestly, a lot of times it's the rider. It's getting that head down uh, in a bigger group and releasing. So 
I did a trail ride on a horse I hadn't ridden before, or I'd ridden one time before. And there were maybe six or seven of us. Wait, maybe six of us. Yeah, something like that. And he was pretty pacey. And I, he was pretty pacey, not super good at with head down. I rode him that entire trail ride, walk, gate, little canter, and worked on head down the whole ride, probably about two hours, hour and a half, two hours. And I went whatever speed everybody else went. Um, but I constantly released as soon as he softened. And by the end of the trail ride, he was gating. The trick what I'm saying is that it doesn't matter the situation. You can work on head down. I work on head down all the time with horses that I get on and they're hot. From the first time I get on them, they're, they haven't been warmed up. They're, they want to go, go, go. And what everybody thinks is you have to hold the reins tight, but you don't. You have to loosen them. And again, if they speed up, I pull on the reins and slow down. But as soon as they slow down, I drop those reins. And that's the missing piece for a lot of people is they don't trust their horse enough to do that. And I need you to try it. You need to hold and as soon as this horse softens, release. And it's a lot of work. But remember, you have to do that a hundred times before the horse starts to get it. Release on your ride a hundred times. Even if you can't stop and praise, you need to release those reins a hundred times. And yeah, that's daunting. And your horse may want to go fast. But then if you can stop and praise because you're riding with good people, that will help. So that if he does drop his head ever, you can stop right there and let him have a break and he'll get it. And that's where I encourage you to ride with people that all will take care of you and will go the speed you need. So Melissa, I hope that helps. I know it doesn't seem like an easy solution. Um, I don't let horses speed up faster than I ask them to go. I do pull on the reins to slow them. But then as soon as they soften, I release the reins. So again, if you want to see that video, you can take a look. It's in the private training group. You can join. It's $99. One-time fee. You're in for life. And that video is available and you can see how much I release. And that horse has a high head. <clears throat> but you see, like within 30 minutes, he started dropping his head both at the walk and faster speeds, even though his energy was very much up. Uh, so I hope that encourages you guys, uh, not only uh, in gating, but maybe in painting and art and in life. Anything you start, you're not going to be good at. But Give, be willing to try something a hundred times. Just a hundred times. Maybe that seems like a lot. Sometimes I say it, it seems very hard to get to a hundred times, but then I've done it myself and I know you can do it. Um, and I know that this year, even if you say, I'm going to try to stop and praise a hundred times this year, even if it doesn't be, end up being in the first week or the first month, I just need you to say that you're going to try. And I know you're going to get it and it's going to help you and your horse and it's going to help you with other things. Imagine starting something new and you only try it five times or ten times. Do you think people go and take archery lessons and are experts in five lessons? Do you think they're experts in a hundred lessons? A friend of mine posted, I think, something to the effect of, do you expect, you, she said, do you walk into a language class? You want to learn a foreign language. Do you expect to learn it in two or three sessions? Of course not. Why do you expect your dog to learn obedience in two or three sessions? And while we're not dealing with dogs or foreign language, it's basically the same thing. However long it would take you to master something new is how long it's going to take your horse. And that is where we get into trouble because we expect so, so much of the horse. And, and we expect them to get it really fast, a hundred times. And that's just the beginning. Happy New Year, guys. I can't wait to see what we can accomplish this year. You got this.